Okay, um, we'll call the meeting of the Waitley Select Board to order at 6.05 p.m. on Wednesday, the 22nd of December. Um, happy winter, officially. Um, agenda tonight is um, poll hearings, correct, Brian? That's the big one. Is there something you need to read or can we just start talking? Um, I think you can just uh, open the public hearing and, and start going. Okay. And then uh, we just talk about which one you're which one you're doing, I guess. Uh, you can tell me which one I'm doing. Uh, let's start with. Um, let's start with the river because we have enough butter here. OK. OK. So that um, is ever sourced. OK, I will open the public hearing. Um, we're going to discuss the poll located at the. Close to the corner of Christian Lane and River Road. Um, Let's, Mike. Do you want to do you want to uh, kick things off and talk about what your your perspective on this? Well, my perspective was way back when we had a gentleman that was doing the consulting work for the new layout of poles and things. We basically told them that no new guide wires because they had anticipated putting a guide wire about 15, 16 feet into the property, which would have been into the picture window of the residence, basically like right there. I can just about get by the guy that's there now. And my tenant called me because they were drilling to put a new guy in the base of it way in. So she was kind enough to put me on the phone with the Verizon gentleman that was doing the drilling. And I advised him if he would please stop because there's no authorization for private property, which he was very nice and very cordial about stopping and said he would pass it along to his supervisor. And then my wife reached out to the gentleman that took over from the initial person doing the consulting. I think his name was Mr. Roche. And he contacted both Eversource and Verizon. And Eversource got back in touch with my wife and she agreed to a new guy no farther in than the existing one. So I was just kind of, we were taken a little bit of back by everything that transpired up to that point because it was not a, uh, it was not a good situation, but they did rectify it and everybody acted professionally and responded in a great manner to uh, listen to our concerns and, and fix that. So the biggest concern I have now is that I really do not wish to have two guy wires on my property once that new pole is switched over and set up just to be sure there's some safeguard to remove the old pole and the old guy so I can get in between there with my tractor and trailer and whatever else I need to do to access the front of that property. Okay. Um, yeah. Nick, do you want to do you want to speak on behalf of Ever Eversource to this? Sure. I got my uh, toddler here tripping in my ear. Um, sure. No worries. But I'll do my I'll do my best. So I was brought to speed on the um, you know the situation regarding the placement of that guy wire, and uh, I, was, I was told that was rectified. So I'm happy that you guys were able to you know work that out between the multiple parties here. You know we're talking about the town, the the residents, Verizon, Eversource. So there's a lot of people. So communication is key to resolve these issues as they come up. Um, and regarding the second guy wire. Once all the utilities are transferred to the new poles, then the old poles will be removed and the old anchor and guys will also be removed um, as those won't be necessary if they've been re-guide. So you, you have my word that um, if, if there are two guy and anchors there because there's two poles, anything associated with that old pole will be removed. Um, we just have to wait until all the utilities are transferred off of it. And then when that pole comes down, they'll take that guy out at the same time. Nick, is there a schedule? um that you've discussed with the other utilities involved with this with this polling guy um that would indicate when the entire transfer will take place and when you again i know it can't be date certain but when you expect removal of the poll to to happen um i don't have a date but i could talk to verizon and try to get some some scheduling with you i know when this project started um we had an understanding that you know, we would remove these double poles as quickly as possible and we intend to honor that. So 
Um, I will reach out to Verizon and see if I can get some sort of timeline. This has all moved really quickly and I'm happy with the, the pace at which, you know, this, all this work has, has been done. So I don't see why the, you know, the double poles will also move quick, move quickly. So, so again, forgive me for being a lay person. Are we talking in it's winter time? So are we talking early spring? Can this be done over the winter? This can be done over the winter for sure. And I, you know, I, I don't want to put Verizon on the spot here because obviously it's a different company, but, um, you know, Eversource works through the winter and with the speed that Verizon was actually able to put these poles up, um, I, I imagine that they will come down just as quickly. So I don't anticipate this will take very long. Greg? Um, my other question is, does Comcast have a place in this as well? Um, Comcast, I believe, is attached to these poles, so they will be part of the transfer process. We have a system in place um, between all the utilities. We have like a shared system that kind of organizes um, whose turn it is to transfer. So we, we typically start start at the top and work our way down. So um, yeah, Comcast is involved in this process as well. Yeah, well, I, do, I don't see them here, so. Yeah, typically they're, 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 they don't usually come to these. It's usually whoever is the, um, the owner of the poll, but this is kind of a special circumstance where Eversource is kind of leading the way, even though Verizon is doing a lot of work. Usually it's the, one of the owners of the poll who comes to these, unless there's a special request made. Um, I don't really have too much contact with Comcast, but um, I don't know if you have some sort of request of that, maybe I could, I could help, uh, I could help there. I don't know. Well, we'll yeah, I just want to make sure that they uh, appreciate that we'd really like this to get done quickly. Okay, I can reach out to um, Anna Rabbi on our team who kind of works with the system that alerts you of the utilities when it's their turn and just, you know, just make sure that Comcast is aware that they have a lot of work to do here, which I believe all the utilities are aware of um, what we need to do here. And, and Nick, there's been no hesitancy on the part of, that you've heard on the part of Comcast to, to, to follow up when it's their turn to, to move wires. No, and um, I think with some extra extra gumption that this project is uh, is receiving, that I, I don't see any issues here. Okay, um, Brian, I'm going to suggest because Comcast is not here that we send a letter to them from the select board, um, giving an overview of our discussion, and that um, we look forward to uh, them working with. Uh, their counterparts at Eversource and Verizon uh, as expeditiously as possible, depending upon the schedule that's that's created. So, so Nick, are you the first ones up on this process, or is it, or or would it be Verizon? No, we'll transfer, and then, um, then Verizon, and then Comcast, I believe. Right, but who put, who puts up the poll? Is the poll already up? No, the poll's not up. So, who puts up the poll? Verizon will put up a poll. Okay. But we don't have it. I assume that they'll move as quickly as possible once, it, if we approve this, correct? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Uh, does, do the abutters have any other questions? Well, to the, to the point of whether the poll is up or not, the poll is up. It is up. Yeah. They've been putting polls up on Christian Lane right along because I have a new one drilled right aside of my old one on uh, my Christian Lane property. And it was kind of interesting because I was reading the, uh, the agenda for tonight, the proposed installation of a 300 foot underground duck bank. Well, it looks like there's already conduit under the road and up to both poles, the one at uh, our re residence at 176 River Road and the one on Jane Gripko's property. There's two, it looks to be at least six inch uh, conduit 90s coming up and attached to the poles. Ryan, you got any, anything to add to that? Why the poles and all the work would have happened to be, as I'm under, has permission been granted? I, I can't imagine it has been, but maybe I missed something. Well, I can intervene a little bit to the point where, I mean, I don't even understand why this location is requiring a poll hearing to begin with, because it's all within 
there's really no new pole sets. They're all replacing existing ones. Whereas the other two hearings you have are for new locations. All the rest of the poles that are on Christian Lane didn't need that have been done didn't need pole hearing because they're replacing a new one and taking the old one out. And these here are the same thing. They're they're all adjacent to each other within a few feet of each other. Um, and as far as the the underground trench goes, that doesn't need a pole hearing anyways. Um, they came to me in a timely fashion to getting it done before winter. I told them that I wouldn't allow it to be done after November because of the frost and can't the availability of getting blacktop. So that's why that was done when I told them they had to get it done. Okay, and that's within your domain to, 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 to drive those decisions, Keith. Correct, now maybe Nick can shed more light as to why this, this location needed a poll hearing. I don't see a reason why it needed one based on how existing polls get replaced as long as they're within you know, a few feet of each other. And, and that's definitely the case of all these poles. They were, they were set right in the same proximity as the existing ones. Sorry, my toddler is chasing the dog around, trying to be disruptive as possible. All right, yeah, so I heard all that and I can, I can speak to that. So I was told that this hearing was for the actual underground portion. Um, you are correct when we, or Verizon um, upgrade poles, like in this case from 40 foot poles to 45 foot poles, if they're within five feet of each other, then typically we haven't had to repetition those in the past. Um, new poles, you know, mid-span poles, or if the poles are, you know, greater than five feet, typically need to be repetitioned. But Eversource also petitions for underground conduit installs within the town right away, which this is here. Um, so it's not technically a pole petition, but it's, you know, petition for electric, you know, facilities installed within the town right away. So that's, that's to my understanding what this was for. Okay. Um, you know, the, the only difference that, you know, when we look at the next two locations, you're going to see that the poles are definitely in new locations. They're not, not, they're not even, they're outside of that five foot area that you're referring to. Okay, let's let's um, let's then just go up the street. We're gonna we're gonna Brian. Unless I'm doing something I'm not supposed to, um, can we go up the street, um, heading west to the next pole and discuss that one? Excuse me, Mr. Chairman. Can I say one more thing, please? Absolutely. Uh, Keith, thank you very much for that explanation. That makes things much clearer. And I'd like to thank the gentleman from Eversource as well for explaining things and thank them again and Verizon for the way they handled our concern initially down there that everything was done in a very, uh, very well-mannered way and very quickly did my wife get responses from all parties involved. So she was very happy with that. And we just want to thank everybody. Well, I, I can say my, 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 my heart goes pitter patter when I, when I hear that, because it sounds, because it means that everyone is caring about the other person uh, and, and, and everyone's being good neighbors. And, and I, and I love hearing that. That's great. Um, I, I wish that uh, Major League Baseball and the Players Association could get along that well. Um, well maybe we can ask Santa on that one, because that's far fetched. Exactly. <laughs> All right, um, Brian, what do we got for the next one? Um, so this is uh, further up Christian Lane, uh, location of a utility pole, approximately 2,138 feet east of State Road, the intersection of State Road and Christian Lane intersection. East of State, okay. This one here is on the east side of 91 on the overpass. So it's between like that service road that goes down to the field and between there and the first tobacco barn that you come to. Um, it's, it's just behind the guardrail. Um, it, has no, it has no impact on me. And because it's on that steep, you know, that there's no access issue, I, can't un I don't see any reason why the property owner would have any objection to that one. Did we receive any comments from 
the I don't know where the next one is, and maybe the next one is. Um, hey, Keith, would would the Skrowskis have an issue with this poll at all? It, it's certainly west of the um, their last house that they have. Um, and again, if you if, if you go west and you go past the house, then you go past that tobacco barn. Yeah, it's still another. Um, distance up and, and I don't, they don't even own that property anymore. And that was sold to Manheim's. So is it, is it beyond the, the field or is it in the middle of the field? It's probably in the middle of the field where Manheim is growing um, parsnips. But again, it's, it's way up on just behind the guardrail. So it's, it's, there's no issue to the Manheim property access wise. Okay, and across the street is what? Um, across the street would be the pine trees in front of Hancock's house. Yeah, okay. Um, Fred? I've, I've got no particular comments on this. And whose poll is this? Verizon. Um, don't we have somebody from Verizon here? Representative Verizon? Yeah, me, Paul Davis. Um, is And this is not considered a double poll, but will anything, Paul, come down after this poll is put up or is this an additional? No, from what I gather, this is a mid-span poll. So it's a, gonna be a brand new poll in between the two existing polls that uh, is being placed um, for the purposes of Eversource doing an upgrade out in that area. Yeah, so, I, I, I'm curious what define if, if somebody could define an upgrade for me. Well, that would be uh, that would be Nick's expertise. Nick, you still there? here. Yeah, yeah. So, I am pretty sure that this poll location is no longer necessary. I believe this was from a previous design for the Yankee. And it's from the customers of the public changed its design slightly. And I think that that poll is no longer necessary. You mean the, new, the additional poll? The new mid span poll, correct. I think we were going to use that poll to come across the kind of open fields that Yankee Candle has in front, on their front property. We take off from that poll, I believe, to come across but we changed the design because we couldn't utilize that field. So we're gonna go just up the driveway now. And, and is that pole scheduled to be placed or that's down the road? We're gonna be just coming off existing poles now okay. for the, the current design. So I don't think this is necessary. Then I would imagine that, Brian, how do we deal with that? Do we just move on and, and it doesn't get approved or I, I don't know what the imaginations yeah. are on this. I think you would just vote to not approve it or, or just recognize that it's been withdrawn. Okay. Um, let's talk about the third one before we take the iterative steps then. Um, what's the third uh, location? Third one is to uh, propose relocation of three jointly owned utility poles on Long Plain Road between 600 feet to um, 1800 feet south of the Christian Lane Long Plain Road intersection. And remind me, Jonathan, we had some e we have some emails to read into the public comment. Okay. So this is wait, how 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 many feet south of Long Plain? Um it's I'm about sorry, sorry, to the east of Long Plain, is it or to the south of Long? John, this is between this is on Long Plain Road and it's all between Christian Lane and the Bow Wow Bathhouse. Oh, okay. So six hundred to the first and then it's about 1800 from the intersection. So is it a replacement or is it a new? Um, I think Verizon could answer that or who's ever. Whose polls are these? Uh, yeah, this is Verizon set area again. So the first poll being T3E85, that's an existing poll being relocated 30 feet north on Long Plain Road. 
Okay, so that's the first one. Mm -hmm. T4 electric 84 is also an existing pole to be relocated 25 feet north on Long Plain Road. And the last pole is existing pole T10 E77 to be re relocated 20 feet north on Long Plain Road. So again, uh, these poles are being requested by Eversource because of electric electrical upgrades is the reason that we were given. Again, maybe Nick can give you the details of why these are being upgraded. Sure. So um, this was another component of the, um, the Yankee Candle upgrade. Long Plain Road here, long story short, serves as a pretty much backup feed for that part of Waitley. Um, so for you know redundancy and reliability, we we're going to put some more equipment on, I think, one of these poles. I think we're upgrading a recloser and... I think the span lengths were really long here. And since the wire size is gonna be larger, you know, that's gonna just create more structural problems there. So I think that they, by moving these poles north, the goal is to reduce the span length to accommodate the larger wire size. And, and are all three utilities uh, operating on each of these poles? Yes. Okay, and Keith, and again, I want, I'm want i gonna give this to Fred in a second. My only question would be the location, set, setting aside for a second, the, the issue we're gonna have with, with making sure that there are no double poles. Is the new location, in again, it, it's subjective, I guess, but is the new location of the three poles going to be more impactful of the, of the residences or or the property owners or less impactful in terms of in front of their home in front of different things do you know off the top of your head i no i can't answer that all i can tell you is that i reviewed them and it has no it, it doesn't impact the town knowing that they're going to put a new one in and take an old one out um that's where you'll have to rely on what you have from the abutters or their emails as to any concerns that they may have. Brian, you want to read those? Yep. Um, first one from Don Skrasky. Um, I hope there will be some discussion as to when the old poles will be removed. I've noticed on Chestnut Lane Hill, there are a number of double poles that have been there for a long time. Um, I hope the select board will uh, get them to have all the double poles removed. Um, the other ones from Jane Gribko. I would like to put on record that I do not want to have double poles left on my property. Um, and this is from Dan Dennehy. Some time ago, maybe a couple of years, Eversource, Verizon, and Comcast assured the select board that they would work together to ensure no double poles be left in town. Power lines go up on the new poles. Phone and cable tend to stay on the old poles. As I recall, this commitment stemmed from the double poles left on Christian Lane Hill by the one lane bridge. The double poles are still there and the possibility of another 35 to 40 double pol poles currently exist on Christian Lane from Yankee Candle Factory to River Road. I would suggest no new pole placements be granted until the Christian Lane Hill and Long Plain Road old poles are removed. I would also suggest some type of monetary enforcement in parentheses the word bonding be required to ensure lower, Chris to ensure lower Christian Lane has no double poles when the project is done. Okay. That's all the ones that were received. So that's that's no no objection from any abutters on Long Point Road. Okay, and and have the poles that Dan cited are they still double poles or have some of those are some of those no longer double poles? The, the ones that he's referring to that are on the west side of the Mill River Bridge, those are still there. Those were put in a while ago for the um, upgrade for the voltage regulators. And whose poles are they? Well, it's they're all Verizon poles, but it's I don't know. I think it's still waiting for Verizon to to transfer. Okay. What's the lo what's the location of those? Are you um, that's on the. 
west side of Mill River. So it'd be the west side of Route 5 and 10. Up from Route 5 and 10, it's about uh, 1,500 feet. And it's before, from 510 Keith, it's before or after the one lane bridge now? It'll be west of the one lane bridge. Okay. I, I was by there this morning. It's just west of the bridge. Right. Right in front of the young, Young's house. Right, in, right in front of, yeah, Kim, yeah, yes. Yeah. Um, I, I, I've got one question for Nick. The reason for doing this is to reduce the span and the the pressure on some of the poles. Is there going to have to be a pole, a new pole, or something done? south of the southmost pole that we're considering here because now you're increasing that by 20 feet to whatever the next pole south is right i think that the next pole south the next immediate pole is like a really short span um that was probably part of maybe a regulator project so there's a, there's room there to move north without adding okay. any more poles yeah fred there's a lot of poles that are in that section that are not shown because they're not affected yeah, well, it, it, this would be off of the bottom of the this map, so nothing is shown. What, whatever the affected span would be is, is off of the bottom of this chart. So, okay. I, I guess I, I want to, the, the issues are, in my mind, are related and, and, and separate all at the same time. Um, I, my only concern about granting the double poles temporary, though they are unscheduled to be, is the, we're at, to, to Dan's point, it's, and it's a valid one, we're just adding to the number of double poles that need to be remedied in town. And I'm curious what the schedule is to, and again, I understand that it's not right here on Long Plain Road um, in terms of the duration of, of double pole sightings, but I'm wondering what the plan is to alleviate the town of those double poles that exist already. And, and I'll be the first to, to say that I, I'm thrilled to hear that a lot of the double poles that existed, what was it, six months ago, no longer exist. So that's great, um, and it shows that there's there's intent to to remove double poles, but if we could just talk about the ones on on Christian Lane, as an example, what's the schedule to remove those double poles, and how does that schedule in terms of workload impact the removal of these double poles once they become you know double? So I think what we can do here um, is maybe pull the double pole chart that I think I think at a previous meeting Verizon said they have records of that, and you know I think all the utilities may if they're they're set. Uh, we could probably pull that report and just kind of take a look at how many we're dealing with. We can address the Christian Lane ones hopefully first. Um, I believe that's what you just requested, and then we could big picture look at all the double poles in town and get an accurate timeline to um, get the associated parties to transfer so we could remove those. Well, Nick, it seems to me that it, it shouldn't, I mean, we're, we're using Christian Lane as the example, but it, <laughs> we should do an aged report, to, you know, and, and do it, which ones are the oldest? And, and I know Brian looked at this report earlier today. And so I don't know what the oldest, you know, what, what, how old these double pulse sightings are on Christian Lane, but it, it should be, it should be what's the oldest and, and, and just take it off the queue to, in my mind. But if, if, if I'm going to be comfortable, not, you know, moving this hearing to it, to it, to another date, I, I, I'm looking for some kind of schedule to see what, what the elimination of those that exist already are. And again, I say that because I do believe you guys have all the intention of the world in, in, in doing it. Um, I just need, I think, I think neighbors and people want to know what the schedule is 
And I think that's that's a fair question. Brian, yeah, absolutely. It's not it's not something I can provide at this moment. I'll have to talk to the other utilities. Um, maybe we can put something together and provide, you know, some sort of document to the select board digitally. You know, after the holidays, maybe I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably what I would suggest. Ryan, what do you got in terms of the report that you're, you're looking at? Um, I mean, I don't, I don't have it in front of me, but okay, sorry. Um, I can, I can stop share this. And, and I don't believe that the report that the double poll report that we received, I don't think it has dates on it, but I, I don't remember. Let me see no, if I can bring it up. Did not have dates. So do we have a sense here again using Christian Leading's example? Do we have a sense of how old those are? I want to say they're pre-COVID. Maybe really, well, how I came to the conclusion that I did was we had the report that Verizon had sent in, in June 2021. And we compared and I compared, put that alongside the one that they had recently sent us. And the majority of those polls um, that were on there were not on the June one. So um, they have to be within the past six months. And, and I think most of them are on, most of them are on uh, Christian Lane. And I think Keith had a, maybe a couple others that are existing, but I believe that they're fairly, from, from fairly recent projects. Um, but Keith may know a little bit better than I, but they would seem to be fairly recent. I, I don't think there's anything much more than, than a, a year spanning, a year timeline. Um, there's a, probably a couple in West Whateley that have been the longest that are not on the list. Um, I can provide those locations to Verizon. Okay. Why would a list be incomplete? It seems like a simple data report. Well, I don't know how often that the, the last list that Brian gave me today, when I looked at it, uh, I think there was 10 on it and only two of them had not been cleaned up. The eight, eight had been already cleaned up and removed. Um, but again, I don't know how often they prepare a new list. Right, but, but it sounds like, again, I, this is anecdotal, but it sounds like in West Whateley, there are polls that aren't on past reports. And it's, and, and, and and I just, how do we, how are we certain that all double poll locations in town are? are you know, one of, one of the things, and I don't know if it has any bearing on the list or not, um, but some of them I believe are um, accident, accident generated replacements from vehicle accidents. Um, others, I know like a windstorm uh, on North Street up by the White Bridge campgrounds, snap the pole. Um, those are the ones like that are, that are not on it. Whereas the ones that are on that list that you're looking on now are more of a um, list that's generated when they do like an upgrade type of thing. Okay. Yeah. So, Fred, I have a suggestion. Yep. What about if we continue this hearing until we get, and, and, and Nick's been great about offering to, to, to help move this forward, until we get some level of a schedule as to when all double poles in town are eliminated. Because I think that the residents have a, a very valid, you know, none of us would want two polls in front of our homes. Um, but we also have to understand that schedules are schedules and, and workload is workload and capacity is capacity. So, so people have to be understandable that, that things take time occasionally. That being said, I, I wonder whether we just continue this hearing until we get a schedule of, of when we can expect these double pole locations to be to be to be alleviated, and we can go from there. 
the the only issue I might have with that is delaying this hearing just delays the whole process. It just Verizon and Eversource can't do their work without a, approval. So it just, it's going to keep dragging it out. Uh, yeah, that's that's true. Um, I, I don't know what whether there's, again, urgency is subjective sometimes. Um, I, I, I think what I'd like to see going forward, I don't know about for this or not, is just an understanding on the part of the involved parties that when we get an application for a double, for a location for a double poll, that it comes along with a schedule for proposed schedule for removal. Would that be part of the application? Or we and, and if we don't get that schedule, we don't consider the application until the schedule. We don't consider the application until we have a schedule, right? I, is there Nick? Is there a, a, an urgency around? I, I guess most importantly, I guess, is there an urgency around the um, the Long Plain Road polls that? You really need to get moving on this, or could we wait until the, the schedule is create is 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 delivered in terms of removal of polls? <coughs> and again, I'm not going to keep anyone to a date certain, but a ballpark schedule. I mean, I don't want to speak on things that are outside of my control. I mean, producing that schedule is outside of my control this time. You know, I can request the available parties produce it, but you know, that's not something I can provide so it's kind of hard for me to comment on i can't comment on the urgency i mean to meet yankee candles um deadline i wouldn't really want to sit on this but i mean that kind of that's kind of outside of my control but i would like to get this moving because i don't know what kind of weather events are going to be between now and you know i don't know what this winter holds this could if this is a bad winter and all of our work is delayed, you know, I don't want to, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't want, I don't want to uh, gamble on that, but he, he needs to pee. Um. <laughs> okay, no, I, Fred, I, I think your idea is, uh, is a good one that, that I think I'm okay approving these, but I don't know, Brian, how we would do it, whether it requires a motion or whether it's just a, a, a and, uh, you know, the principle of the board is that we won't entertain future applications without a simultaneous schedule of double poll removal. How yeah, I think, I, I think, I think you vote to, you know, you vote on whatever ones we have before us tonight. And then, and then maybe at one of our meetings in January, we have the board adopt some type of um, uh, petition policy or instructions that 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 lay that out um if, if we if we can just establish you know a set of procedures or requirements for an application you know is it a schedule for removal of that double pole is it a schedule for removal of existing double poles i think we need to talk about it and decide what uh what course we'd want to take but i think putting some sort of qualifications on new applications would be a way to at least get some sort of handle on this. Right. Okay. I, I guess I'm okay with that. So, uh, Fred, do you want to let's do it one at a time? And, and do we need to make a motion on the corner of, of um, Christian Lane and, and um, River Road, or is that moot? Where do we stand on that, Brian? Um, so we're talking the one that that's not needed is on the is on oh you're talking river road i'm talking river i'm talking the first one we talked about yeah um i would that's, recommend that's the that, underground i would recommend that's the underground right it. i think there's a i think you should i think the press i, I think you should set the precedent that that if if things are going to be put underground that that you would want to have the discussion at least okay, okay. And then i'll move the approval of the underground conduit at the intersection of Christian Lane and River Road. Uh, you might I, Jonathan, you might just want to uh, um, 
ask if anybody has any more public comments and then close the uh, hearing I'm and then sorry. i'm sorry yep yeah are there any other comments or questions from the public mr edwards uh my wife and i have uh no problem with that proceeding down there like i said everybody has been cordial in rectifying our concerns in an extremely timely manner and then with uh Keith's explanation of what happened down there and everything else, everything fits together. And uh, we don't have any, uh, any uh, um, uh, objection or any ill feeling of it proceeding. Okay, I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so I, I then with, with the motion still on the table, I will second that motion. Well, um, we have to, I think you have to close the public hearing first. Okay. <laughs> These are the formalities that just drive yep. me crazy. Um, we'll close the public hearing. Yep. Um, now I, I will make I will submit my motion again to approve the conduit, the underground conduit River Road and Christian Lane. I will second that. Um, all those in favor, Fred. Aye. Me, yes. That carries. Um, I will just. Um, I, I guess. As chair, um, why don't we do a motion to take no action on it? Oh, a motion to take no action yeah. as opposed to removal of the okay. Yeah. Um, I move we motion. take no action on the now not proposed poll on Christian Lane. Uh, the one by the, the one, um, the one just east of State Road, right? I'll second that. All those in favor, Fred, aye, me, yes. Uh, the and third poll is the or the the the, the three uh, polls that are being moved. Um, all which are being moved north on Long Plain Road, heading towards Christian Lane. Um, all based between uh, Christian Lane and and Bow Wow Bathhouse, or or whatever it's called these days. And I apologize that it's not not Bow Wow. Um, Heroes. Heroes now. It's going to be something else now. I, I, I hear so, I, and I and I can't remember. Um, so I will hear a motion on on to accept that. I move we approve the three poles to be moved north on Long Plain Road. I will second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Me, yes. That motion carries unanimously. And then I will just um, make sure that it goes into the record that we in a at a meeting in January of the select board, we will discuss on the agenda um, a policy around what needs to uh, be added to as a as a um, as an additional uh, piece of information um, schedules on double polling uh, with each uh, application in the future. So we can we can so we can we'll talk about that at a, at a January meeting. Yeah, I got some additional ideas from our past five years of fun with full hearings. So, yeah. All right. So I hope that works for. I understand. I appreciate it works for um, Mike and Gretchen. Uh, Nick, I hope this is good for you, and I hope Paul, this is good for you as well. Thank you. Yep. Thank you for your time. Okay. It works for me. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great night. Thank you for, for joining and, um, us. I'll, I'll talk to the other utilities to see if I can get some information on the existing double poles. And um, I'll be in contact with uh, someone on the select board and see if I can at least provide an email with an update soon. I appreciate that. Thanks, Nick. Happy holidays. Thank you. You too. Take care. All right. Um, let's go to new pro, Brian. Yep. I mean, I don't have anything else on, on COVID-19 right now. It's okay. not great. So let's, I think we should just keep whatever we have in place. Yeah. Um, so the new pro lease. Um, so the new pro lease. So new pro rents the lease is a space, the, the excess space in the back of the town offices. Um, and they have done that for several years now. And they were on the eight, I think it's an 18 month lease. So it expires on December 31st. Um, and they're looking to renew the lease. Okay. Um, we haven't had any, we haven't had any issues with them. Um, one of the things that, that, that we do need to address is that 
Um, they are using some more, they are using some water. Um, and that sort of wasn't originally, I think, intended. Um, so we noticed our water bill going up and then we tried to <laughs> investigate with Keith and Wayne and you know, we figured out that they were using some additional water back there. So um, I think that the, that the rent um, could be increased um, if we wanted to, um, at least to cover, you know, those additional utility costs. And um, it seems like everything has, <laughs> everything has gone up in the past 18 months. So, um, okay. Um, we don't have a water bill yet though, that, that reflects the cost up, uh, increase or we do. Um, it's gone up about $30 a month. Okay. Um, I would, when they started because of inflation, um, and, uh, and the factor of the water and inflation and, and just costs, I'm absolutely positive that it's going to cost us more money this year to to, to, to plow and to sand and to do, I mean, inflation is, is, is pretty bad right now. Fred, I was thinking about um, a, 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 a straight 10% increase. Their current that, that was the number I was thinking about too. Okay. So that would increase their rent from $2,200 per month to $2,200 per month, if my math is correct. Um, Brian, is the, is the area back there heated or? Um, it's minimally heated. Um, it's kept around, I don't know, 50 something degrees so that the, um, the sprinkler system doesn't freeze. Right. Okay, we don't need it. There is some impact on the heating plant in the building. Yeah. Yeah. It's our, we leave it at whatever our, um, unoccupied temperature would be. So it would be whatever, whatever the heating system would, would reset to while, when the building's not occupied. Okay, but if fuel costs are going up, it will cost more just to maintain a minimum temperature too. Yeah. Yep, and obviously the electricity is not separate there, so. Right, right. And 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 if fuel costs are in 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 parallel with other inflation, it's you know five to eight percent depending upon who you talk with. So I think ten percent. Yeah, I've got no problem with a ten percent. Okay. Requesting a ten percent increase. I'll, I'll make a motion to increase the, uh, that we would like to offer uh, a new lease to new pro. Uh, and the only difference in the lease being uh, a 10% increase in their uh, rent from $2,000 per month to $2,200 per month. I will second that. All those in favor, Fred? Aye. Me, yes. Unanimous, carried. The last thing is cultural council, I believe, Brian. Yeah, so we received the, the the board received a request to reappoint. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm not gonna pronounce the name right, so I apologize. But Rhina Vijay to the Waitley Cultural Council for a second term. Sounds good to me. Uh, I move, move the appointment. Second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Me, yes. Motion carries unanimous. Anything else, Brian? Yeah, just just uh, really quick, a couple things. So the Haydenville Road reconstruction project that's uh, be, the design's being uh, paid for by MassDOT scheduled a 25% design hearing on January 12th. It's going to be a virtual uh, virtual hearing at 6 p.m. So that's January 12th at 6 p.m. Um, the, the information to access that public hearing is posted on the website. It's posted in the town hall, uh, town offices. Um, so if people have interest in that, um okay. that's and, happening and, on the 12th and, amy do, do you have the capacity to, to send uh calendar invites i'm sorry what do you have the capacity to send calendar invites yes okay if, if you could send me one i'd appreciate that on that so okay thank you i'm sorry brian what up? yep so so that's the same time that we would normally have our select board meetings. Um, so I'm wondering if there's a different date that we wanna have the select board meeting or I can just email everyone and find out because Joyce isn't here. Yeah, let, let's 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 be cognizant that, that she's not here and let's schedule it after, after you get a sense of your equivalent of the doodle poll. Okay. Um, the next one, obviously, once we hit January and February, we're going to be starting budget planning for FY23. Um, 
and I assume the select board's looking for the same process, the joint meetings when we ask people to come and um, present so that they only present one time between with the finance committee and select board jointly. Yes, Fred. Yes. Good with okay. That. Yeah. okay. Um, and also, I just wanted to let you know that all of the the um, the AV equipment that was that was uh, ordered through Wasmans has been installed, and Comcast has done the installation that it needs for um, for us to broadcast live from the conference room. So if you have a chance, you can stop in and see all the new gadgets. And um, someday when times are better, we'll we'll be in there and we can we'll have a much easier time hosting a hybrid meeting. So. Great. It'll be it'll be a good setup, I think. And it only took us when do we move into the town offices? 2015. So it only took six years for to be able to go live there. So yeah. Does does using the system require any particular training or it will, yeah. Well, six yep. years that check that box and then someday we'll get those temporary walls put up in the uh main main part of the offices someday in another six years maybe maybe um all right fred you got anything no i got nothing okay all right well i wish everyone a happy holiday season uh, as do i we will talk with everybody in 2023 move Thank to you. adjourn second all those in favor fred aye me yes that's it. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Happy holidays, good night. everybody. Good holidays. Have a good holiday.